Hello everyone and welcome back to another Mortal Kombat video and today we're going to be going over my character recommendations for the new invasion mode. I'll also be giving some baseline tips and tricks uh, that I've learned so far. I'm still researching and experimenting on all the aspects of invasion but I think recommending a character is a great place to start. So I'll just get it out of the way. The character I recommend for invasion is Sub-Zero and the cameo fighter I recommend is Kano. So the reason why I chose Sub-Zero is first off, he is really easy to learn and has a lot of combos and moves that are extremely good, especially against AI. The first thing that elevates Sub-Zero in compared to other characters is his ability to freeze the opponent. So this is game changing in Invasion because many of the combatants will have armor when they are attacking and freezing them makes it so they can attack, thus bypassing that armor. And if you've played Invasion, you know exactly what I'm talking about and you know exactly how annoying that armor is because it just kind of makes it so you can't really attack them as a lot of these characters will be will be very aggressive in attacking you quite often. But freezing them allows you to, well, stop them from attacking and get a super easy combo off of that. So obviously this is extremely overpowered in invasion mode. Additionally, there's many ways to freeze your opponent. Of course, there is the classic ice ball, which definitely does the job. However, the activation is quite slow, so I wouldn't recommend activating it at close range. Um, that's where Ice Clone comes in. Ice Clone allows you to quickly backpedal away from your opponent and creates an Ice Clone that if your opponent touches it, they become frozen. Ice Clone also blocks almost every projectile in the game, which is also extremely helpful and overpowered as well. You can also activate it in the air for some interesting combos, but I'll leave that um, up to the masters to kind of... <laughs> show you the way on that one. Um, plus the AI is just pretty stupid and usually just walks into the ice clone or ice wall anyways as they're extremely aggressive and kind of forget the block sometimes. The next point is the fact that Sub-Zero can attack at every range and position effectively and quickly. He also just has a ton of simple moves that you can utilize to your advantage. So in short, gameplay wise, he's easy to learn, can bypass a lot of the opponent's defenses, by freezing them, attack at any range, and has some super easy combos even a noob like me can master. Alright, now to the details and the statistic nerd stuff. Alright, so Sub-Zero is an ice character. I know, shocker. But this is actually important to point out as different elements do varying amounts of damage to other elements. So Sub-Zero's attacks are almost exclusively ice attacks. So you only have to worry about fire and lightning who will do extra damage to you shown by this chart on screen. Those attackers are Liu Kang who does both fire and lightning, Scorpion who uses fire and Raiden who uses lightning. However, these fighters are quite rare to fight especially near the beginning. But I have gone against them all and none of them were much of a challenge plus you do extra damage against fire combatants anyway. So fire evens out as you both do damage to each other. So in turn, you only have to worry about Lightning, which is literally one character out of the entire roster. Well, two if you count a few attacks from Liu Kang, but then again, you do extra damage to him as well because Ice does additional damage to Fire. So Ice also does less damage to physical combatants and Ice combatants, but it's nothing major and is easily bypassed as you level up and apply like relics and stuff to your build. But now, time for the good stuff. Ice does additional damage against Toxic and Fire Attackers, which is 5 fighters that you will absolutely destroy, especially if you increase your ice damage with relics and such, which I'll probably talk about in a different video. Additionally, you will take less damage from Toxic and Ice attacks, which is helpful as you do less damage against Ice Combatants, so it kind of evens out the playing field. So in short, you only take additional damage from one character out of the entire roster, and do additional damage to five fighters and are resistant to four fighters. So that's a pretty advantageous position to be in. Now for the cameo. So I chose Kano for three simple reasons. First off, he's a beginning cameo fighter, so you can get him right off the bat without fighting a single time, so that's great for beginners. Uh, two, he has some great full screen attacks that are very fast and do a pretty good chunk of damage that are activated quite quickly. So that's pretty good. Three, he works great with Sub-Zero. While Sub-Zero has some projectiles, um, most of the full screen ones are pretty slow. So adding Kano's extremely fast projectiles just really come in clutch. 
Like, I've used Kane to completely win fights on their own. He's really that good. So, he's really that good. So what, usually what I do, I'll do like an Ice Clone and then I'll like send my Ice Ball out, freeze the opponent and then activate Kano if I don't want to get close to them or maybe they're just, you know, really strong and, you know, do whatever. Kano does a lot of damage. Um, so he's just a great overall starting cameo fighter. So that's about it for the video. I'll be working on a few other videos, but if you want to see a certain video, make sure to let me know down below and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace. Sub-Zero wins.